So, uh, recently there's been some more online left the drama. Uh, so, so far, uh, there's this guy named Bo the Fifth Column. Uh, so, as a whole, the thing that comes with it is that Bo, um, he's a leftist, like, very clearly. So, uh, I think I can speculate he's an anarchist. And so, what happens here is. Bo with the fifth column uh, takes a lot of approaches in order to appeal to people and like bring people farther to the left, right? So let me go ahead and find a video. I think captures him pretty well because I I liked it a lot. So, so uh, there's a video he did. Uh, the name is, let's talk about Biden, parent patterns, and soft power. So as a whole, I thought it was pretty good. So let's go ahead and watch a little bit of it just to indicate the general kind of content he does, right? Grammarly does more than catch errors. As a matter of fact... Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's about to get on. So today, we're going to talk about patents, and soft power, and hard power, and foreign policy. Because some news broke, and as soon as the news broke, everybody's like, wow, that's really humanitarian. That's a good move. It's amazing. We have talked about it before. When something is happening on the international stage that relates to foreign policy, even if it's a good thing, it may not necessarily be altruistic. And that's so, you know, this is, I like the way he does his intro so far, right? You know, it's uh, very calm, very even demeanored. And as a whole is, I like him talking about these complicated issues and he presents them in a simple way, at least. That's what's happening here. The Biden administration's decision to uh, support ending the patents on our vaccines, that is not a case of we have the means, therefore we have the responsibility. That's something else. It's an exercise in soft power. Soft power as opposed to... So him talking about uh, the reasons that politicians do into this, like to some extent people already know this, but you know... The often the issue that comes with it is like when a president does a positive thing, sometimes it's going to be characterized, sometimes propaganda and all that stuff. Like he's going to cover a bit of that, but as a whole is propaganda and the aesthetic of being progressive and being humanitarian. The reality is power systems usually engage in good behavior because it's going to be benefit them in some meaningful way. The hard power. Soft power is getting other countries to come to you. They want your involvement, and it buys you influence. Hard power is going after them. And the United States has used a mix for a very long time, but we heavily rely on hard power. You've probably heard me say we should be the world's EMT rather than the world's policeman. That is a visualization of the difference between soft power and hard power. Think about it. If you find out an EMT is coming to pick you up and throw you in her vehicle, you may not be happy about the situation you're in, but you're pretty glad they're coming. Okay, so uh, he talks about a little bit of uh, EMT and the way to design a political philosophy and political action according to the perspective of EMT. It's really interesting. I like a lot of what he does. And as a whole is, you know, like, it's interesting is relating, instead of being like the world, like the security guard, right? You know, a cab, cops are bastards, hate the military, that kind of stuff. And as a whole, um, what's interesting is that, that, relating to the idea of building organizations along an EMT system or uh, trying to transition the mindset while, you know, 
it's really interesting because as a whole is it's trying to create EMTs on a more empathetic basis. You know, I feel like you have to have a lot of some level of empathy and care and concern for you to engage as a EMT specifically and specifically uh, he addresses in another video called street medics and that's really interesting right if the police is coming i'm gonna throw you in their vehicle you're probably not happy about it that same uh feeling happens on the international stage as well uh, i'm a supporter of the idea of being the world's emt because there is there aren't a lot of songs criticizing EMTs the way there are police. And that's the international feeling on it as well. Well, that's just because police themselves suck while EMTs provide ultimately a good. You know, they provide an essential service. However, police do not provide any useful services, really, except for a few. Maybe, like, uh, a little bit of security management, like uh, directing traffic, but not... As a whole, the police really don't provide many valuable services, and as a whole, the whole entire st structure system is pretty corrupt, and it's designed to be corrupt because that's just how it's built, right? The EMTs themselves provide a valuable and useful service, you know? They help s quickly uh, intervene and save lives, they quick help quick, uh, quickly help transport, they quickly help maintain and regulate, and very quick situations, they have to make very fast judgments, and as a whole, you know, EMTs are a lot more sympathetic than anything. So, why are we really doing this? It's not like the United States to give a profit what's happening. We are countering near peers. China and Russia, they're already doing this. Recently, Russia sold a uh, bunch of vaccines to Peru wasn't long after that uh, they were in talks about a new lithium mine. China So let's look that up. Uh, this was Russia and who again? They a bunch of a new lithium mine. After that uh, bunch of vaccines to Peru. Peru. Peru and Russia lithium mine talks. This developed Ithium project, Lithium project, early reported, because it was affected by the new core kicks off. Aerocore drill program, West Africa. Can I see if he links anything? Not quite. Mid scramble. Okay, fast trades and vaccine while global COVID pro pre procurement, very fluid. Russia. Deals to cement alliances of low and middle income, in income countries stung by the vaccine gold rush. Fuck off. Deeply penetrating markets. Okay. Has become the expert in public diplomacy on the content using common interest approach. Okay. Well, it's also present to South Africa regulatory authority confirmed that it received an application for licensing from Sputnik. Also, uh, okay. Started vaccinating pe people on an experimental basis. The most vaccinations so far have been government officials. Okay, we have registered. Okay. Meanwhile, Russia has set up vaccine markets, Euro Asia. 
smacking inroads. Argentina. Argentina are getting both the Sputnik and Spino Farm while the Dominican only had only secured the Sino Farm vaccine so far have just arrived. President Luis or ever say political power donations to the global public good have been accused of donating for political power just at recent meetings that have viewed its books for COVID. Together they said they've submitted the vaccine portfolio to agency review, but the deals with entry mind while in the absence of other approvals. Individual countries ranging from Chile to Zimbabwe and regardless of have taken advantage of the three month interval. And just the picture. We'll have to do some research on the uh so I'm I'm curious to where he's getting his information more than anything. Because I would be very interested to learn, you know. It wasn't long after that uh they were in talks about a new lithium mine. New let's try it one more time. New lithium mine in Peru. Let's file it with an open pit mine located in the district. It is estimated she is bill promoting from party, no thanks. Prospecting this says comes in engaging. Apaza argues in the bill that the Peru, Peru needs investment to carry out prospective prospecting and exploration. According as has potential lithium. Alright. So China two things to keep in mind for the future, right? To Algeria. Algeria has promised to support China's core interests. Okay. In so we'll do the China Algeria research later. But yeah. Pose people meddling in their internal affairs. Something China's gonna need international support on pretty soon. This is soft power at war. Now, so I can't exactly support the accuracy of the data or the information he's uh, using. However, the uh, common connection between uh, financial support or political support for a humanitarian cause in order to derive soft power, it's pretty common. The reality that comes is that as a whole, political powers are going to engage in these kind of relationships in order to build a reputation, build a relationship, build camaraderie to some extent, and be able to exert more influence over the uh, respective nature, nation to be able to influence them more significantly. The reality is that China, they're really good at this. They are really good at this, and they've been doing it a while. The United States is going to be playing catch-up. Not just with vaccines, but overall. <coughs> that is one of the good things that will come from the current situation with China, Russia, and the United States, and the reality that none of them really want to go to war with each other. They're going to have to find other ways to exercise their influence, and this is going to be one of them. This is a good move for U.S. foreign policy to, to start taking small steps towards exercising a lot of soft power it yeah just... and the issue that also comes is over the recent years we've had a lot of issues with um the united states as a means of coherently organizing along a political line right i don't like nations i don't like states i'm pretty well opposed to them but, you know, when you look at the political and uh, international relations analysis lenses, you look at how nations are going to organize. And as a whole, there's a pretty consistent trend, I would say, that the United States, uh, while has been uh, attempting to exert more power, is the there's been a lot of uh, divisive issues like. Uh, greater partisanship makes it harder for a uh, more coherent foreign policy. And as a whole, is uh, China has been exerting significantly more influence, been growing uh, in its control over the uh, laid institutions. And like uh, they're more involved in the IMF, the UN, uh, World Trade Organization. But they also have been establishing new uh, 
their own institutions. Like they've recently been study uh, establishing a a certain bank that probably works the same way along the IMF, right? And they're able to make loans and increase, do all these things to in significantly increase their financial power and be able to influence foreign policy of different nations more effectively, right? So happens, this is also really good for humanity, especially if there could, you know, be some kind of vaccine race that gets triggered by this, where all of these countries are trying to exert influence by supplying the most vaccines. That would be a really good thing for everybody, because mm -hmm. a lot of these countries, they, it would be at least a year before they get them without this. So let's hope that happens. Um, this isn't the grand humanitarian gesture. Oh, yeah. It, it's probably going to be. Nations and states do not engage in humanitarian efforts, really, unless it's going to significantly aid them in some way, right? It's either a matter of optics. It's a rather a matter of increasing their political influence, as it is to say, uh, allow for them to more effectively colonize an area, right? Um, there's a lot of different factors that all apply, and the, the reasoning itself, while you can never fully know inside the heads, you can infer their behavior and what benefits that's drawing from it. Painted as here in the United States. This is about obtaining influence overseas. It just so happens in this case it's good for everybody involved. That's normally not the case. But this is a good illustration of it because you can see how it plays out and how other countries are already doing it and getting rewards from it. Generally speaking, hard power, military force, coercion, they obtain more immediate results. Soft power, stuff like this, it typically takes longer to uh, get any return on the investment, but the the benefits are a lot longer lasting. If this is the beginning of a shift, it's a really good thing. Yeah, so this uh, description between hard power, soft power, it's pretty common in uh, academic circle, academic undergrad studies. So like this is like politics 101 basically, but as a whole, the hard power versus soft power, right? You know, it's hard power of like going to war, uh, like uh, invading Iraq. Iraq, um, what else, like, uh, like, uh, you know, we've had all the, uh, uh, these significant, uh, like, black national, uh, black, uh, nationalist group, like, uh, the original Black Panther group, and how they were bombed and hit hard and all that stuff, and then we had Rosewood, and those are examples of hard power, right, the physical demonstration of violence, and that's going to get a more immediate result. But when you look at soft power, you have to think about all the different ways a state influences in on a foreign policy level and on a local domestic level. You have to think about how they're going to set up trade relations specifically to where other nations who want to interact in this trade system and derive the benefits are going in a way to listen more significantly to the United States if they are significantly involved in it. When you think about on the local domestic level is you have to think about like the capitalist structures how they form and all these different methods of soft influence while they hold the ultimate ability to engage in hard violence right the hard power threat itself is also a significant component to soft power because you don't have to engage in violence but the threat of violence makes people more more likely to listen or more likely to be favorable to your position in that instance i don't know that it is this may just be an attempt to counter <laughs> russian and chinese soft power um, again that's not to say what's happening is, is bad it is a good thing we definitely should be helping other countries get the supplies they need to make vaccines to get them vaccines to make sure they have the research to, to produce the vaccines. All of this is good. Just don't, uh, don't let it be framed as, you know, we're, we're out there being the world savior. We're hoping to get something in return the same way China and 
Russia had. Yeah. Anyway. So, give me a second. Okay, so let's, so going over the rest of his content, right, we look at more and more of what he's done, it seems, you know, we could, I'll, I could look into uh, earlier stuff, and as a whole is generally, from the little bit I've watched, is, seems pretty good, you know, seems to talk a lot of good things, so as a whole is recently... There's been some drama. Uh, fifth column. So, but as a whole, um. For a little bit, he is basically the Twitter villain of the day. And as a whole is a long time ago, apparently, or I don't even know a long time ago, is a while ago. He uh, seems to be, he has specifically this thing set up. So, suggest that I make this a separate text post. So here it goes. This is browsing bread too when I saw this post. And he's a left type creator who has been getting a good deal of traction lately. Anyway, I like to hear it. So, for the record, my accent, he calls an actor from the Bo Facebook page. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what he's saying here. Uh, you know, came in from checking my pumpkin vines coming up. And uh, looked on Facebook, saw some funny stuff. People saying I'm an actor. I am not an actor. Uh, there's some things that aren't 100% true about this profile, like my name ain't Bo. Mm -hmm. uh, but y'all probably knew that already. Yeah. And I do lay my accent on a little. Yeah, I mean, Bo, yeah. It doesn't seem like a common name nowadays. A little bit thick in most of these videos. Uh, there, there's a reason for it. But let's talk about the fact that there's no way I can be, I can think the way I do because of how I sound. Because, you know, that's something I've, I've dealt with my entire life. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to lay out some facts for you, okay? I, I grew up, I was raised on the Tennessee-Kentucky line. I lived in the South my entire life. Oh, man. <laughs> Living in the South, that's a fun time. I, uh. It's the first time I was thrown from a horse, I was seven. Went to a high school that was so small, it was a high school and a middle school. A few years before that, it was a high school, middle school, and elementary school. Oh, boy. That's uh, unfortunate. My family really did run shy. When I was 16 or so, I got put in cuffs because we illegally possessed an alligator. And I don't mean like we poached a gator. No, we had a live alligator. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, this is this is pretty great. Like, I live in Arkansas, right? And these are the kind of stories you hear all the time. See, Arkansas is the South is kind of fucked, right? Um, the thing that comes is that is financial support, educational support, uh, sex education, uh, minority treatment fucking sucks. Like, uh, I'm probably like two hours from like the center of the KKK. Uh, it's either Harrison or it's, I think it's Harrison, Arkansas. Yeah. Harrison, Arkansas. If you ever go to um, Arkansas, no, fuck it. Do not go there. 
terrible place to go. Okay, do not go there. Okay, so as whole, um, this is honestly he, either he's high humanizing himself or he's being honest and he's probably doing a little bit of both because you know, probably because that's you know, when you do something, it's not just for one reason, usually it's for multiple reasons. So, as a whole, plus him describing this problem comes as like one there's the often perception of the south as complete hicks and complete lack of knowledge and you know there is a significant component of how the south works however the problem comes also is a lot of uh, snooty behavior you know uh, basically people see us as lesser just because we're less educated we have a uh, higher pregnancy rates and all this stuff right and you know th that stereotype kind of just continues to persist while also we maintain it to some extent you know as a whole is the conditions of the south are not through the failures of the people who live here it's more of the history the economic conditions the social conditions into which it exists and the degree of relevancy they've built or lost as time has progressed so yeah so now no, I, I really am the image most y'all have of people that talk like me. Uh, but, yeah, I, 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 I may play up the accent a little bit, and I, and I hide it in, 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 in my everyday life. You can find work videos from me uh, where it sounds like I don't have an accent at all. And it's funny because people, at the same time, they're saying there's no way the guy sounds like that, can think like that. And then they're saying, well, why does he hide his accent? You know, if you're a journalist, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to have people thinking you're stupid. Yeah. Like, having a southern accent in any way, like, I could talk right like this all the time, right? I could, like, play it up a little bit, you know? I have an accent. It's probably pretty clear to those people who don't live here. But problem comes is when you have certain accents people are going to think you're stupid right uh, there's some level of probably eugenics history coming on there's probably some level of uh just antagonisms from old times and all that stuff so you know there's a lot of problems that all contribute to this idea that people in the south are stupid they may be more uneducated on average but they're not stupid okay yeah you're answering your own question now yeah and i, and I do I may be a little bit more educated than I let on in these videos. I mean, maybe, maybe you hablo. Yeah, maybe I speak Spanish. Maybe I speak Russian. Um, maybe all the stereotypes you think about people sound like me aren't true. Like, we don't have universities in the South. But We've got I'm universities in the South, yeah. I got a one. All those stereotypes you have just about the tone of somebody's voice are wrong. Imagine what that means about your stereotypes about people from south of the border. About gay people. About black people. He ain't wrong. About everything. Maybe you shouldn't put so much stock in them. Maybe stereotypes aren't the best way to run your life. Um. Uh, Anyway, so anyway. so I think we got a pretty good idea of him, right? Uh, leftist, lefty, uh, pretty well, um, pretty well made videos, I would say. Uh, does a good a lot of talking. However, recently, um, he has been apparently dealing with a hot lot of hot water. Apparently. I, I can't find the exact tweets. This is just what I've heard through the grapevine. But I wanted to go over his content that, you know, just to talk about it as a whole. Apparently, he was a felon. Uh, got connected in human trafficking at one point, right? He went to prison. He uh, served his time. And let me see. Yeah, it's right here. Uh, most I've seen a few blogs. I've never really read them closely. What other people think of me isn't really my business unless they directly tell me the idea of me taking a deal falls apart with a number of easily verifiable facts. First, I took the case to trial. A plea deal requires you to plead guilty. Second, the sentence itself in the federal system. Everything is governed by the U.S. Sentencing Commission. The most serious charge is the controlling sentence, and everything else is ran concurrently by default. There's literally a charting guidelines. For my case, for see page 258. First, 
blink. The offense level is 12. Immigration, smuggling, transporting, base low offense level. Defendant was convicted, specific offense characteristics. So let's see what he's saying. First, is the, so this is a little chart. See, base, level, base offense level is 12 plus 9. We're having smuggled more than 100 people. It gives you an offense level of 21. There, then you go to the chart without prior criminal history. You're in category at 1. So number of lawful. So add 9. So base level, base offense level, otherwise, so 12, plus 9, so 21. And go outside this range, judge is supposed to have a very good reason, I was sentenced to 41. Okay, this gives you an offense category, then you go to the chart, second link, without prior criminal, so you're supposed to have a very, you're, you're in category 1. So, what we're looking at. So, then you go to this chart, second link of that primary hit, criminal history quotes. The blog ends up pretty good source, though. It points to a lot of official primary sources, most of its description sources. Most of the content is speculation. There are quite a number of people under that. They're seeing the difference between the guy on TFC and Bo. The aggregated content on the TFC sites, on which it shares with clickbait sites, has concluded that he's some sort of con man. In fact, this is the impression I had at first, too. It seems he just went through some bi big life changes. He started an independent news organization that fizzled out. It seems true. I'd like to see some of the corroboration from the claims, which has a pretty interesting comment section. This has ended up being a bit of optic, that bit of an optics problem for him. So... Let's talk about uh, content here, right? Is Bo here? You know, he's got a history, right? And we, when we talk as leftists, we talk about rehabilitation. We talk about making, uh, giving people the opportunity to grow, right? This extends to the most baseline criminals, like stealing, right? Stealing some food or stealing some items from a person right then we go into higher level offenses we talk about crime we talk about robbing we talk about armed assault we talk about rape and as a whole is we as leftists you know it's very uncomfortable with the idea that a person has raped someone or engaged in human trafficking these things you know, it does make us uncomfortable, right? And that's okay. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. But, you know, for us to think of rehabilitation, we can't necessarily preclude all people from rehabilitation, you know? We have to try and rehabilitate even the worst, most heinous crimes people have done. Because in the end... A lot of people do things because of material circumstances. I'm not saying rape is a material circumstance here. What I'm saying is infecting environment often affects behavior. If we infect, affect their environment through rehabilitative processes, we can significantly change a large portion of behavior. And this instance is Justin or Bo here did something wrong on a comparative level right he served his time so the question you have to ask is is he okay can you forgive him now and that's the problem that comes up with so much of like cancel culture and all the issues of like purity testing and all these things right we as leftists if we can understand like you know having people having done things horrible things bad you know a lot of leftists today at one point were nazis though the fact is 
People do terrible things, but we've all done terrible things, right? And you can say all you want that you haven't done a terrible thing, but at the end of the day, you have. Like, everybody's done terrible things. None of us are clean. None of us are pure. And, well, I'm an atheist, right? There's the one Bible verse I think is useful here. It's like, let he, let he who be up without sin cast the first stone. I don't like Bible. I don't like Christianity. But there's some measure of truth there is that we as people far from perfect and fuck up all the time so in this instance is while we should have some level of concern and specul and level of s skepticism sometimes for person's past behavior right but that doesn't prevent a person from being a better person hell you know donald trump hate the man right terrible dude maybe he could be a better person do i think he will be hell no but as a whole is people are not unsafeable to me you know anybody could be but the th thing is we have to determine a threshold sometimes up to which people can be saved and which people we have to kind of just let go right and the threshold, the problem comes with purity testing and uh, these cancel culture elements is that the degree to which we put that threshold is so arbitrarily pr placed sometimes and it precludes so many people. Like, how many times we see Sokka and Left, we see, um, we see Vosh, I, and then, uh, what's her name? Lindsay and ContraPoints, right? People, these people have done some good things and they've done some shitty things right i've done shitty things and as a whole is we have to be skeptical we have to be concerned but that doesn't mean people can't become better people we all can become better people we just have to have to be some healthy of concern and compare their past actions to their current actions but we also don't have to engage in these conspiracies, right? Like, they all they have a long history of racism, and you can see these things leading up to, but if a person fundamentally changes behavior, then we could probably reasonably say is, they're not the same person they once were. So they are capable of reform and change and contributing to the movement. Because the whole is, the idea is we, we bring everybody to the movement, right? We want to make everybody on the left. We don't want to make everybody a leftist. I want to make everybody an anarchist. But as a whole is, you have to address the behavior, try to ref try to help them change the behavior, have them maybe, the significant component is having people realize their behavior is bad. And you have to physically alter their environment. You have to be able to change the way they perceive the world through the environment around them. And as a whole is, we have to do that and you do it as much as you can you try as much and we also this is why we advocate for capitalism right capitalism promotes selfish behavior it promotes greed it promotes uh stealing it promotes all these different components and the poverty people face resorts to criminal behavior so these all just kind of blend into the same issue is power structures social structures were, were socialized into a certain set of behaviors but the problem comes is people assume that because you've done some terrible thing there has to be some inherently bad thing with you that's a pretty consistent component of how people perceive people and as a whole we's, that's just not the reality is everybody's capable of change and everybody's able to become something different so you know give people a fair shot Give them a chance to be better.